I'm about to open up a box of comics from his airness. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and in this video I'm going to open up a box of comics that I picked up from Atomic Avenue from a seller named Micah J23, which I can only assume stands for Michael Jordan. Uh, and I think it's a clue. Uh, the shipment was sent uh, UPS second day air, right? So Air Jordan sent second day air? No? Okay. So I kind of went on this run in June 2022 where I was placing a number of orders with Atomic Avenue. I was getting a little burned out from Midtown and I wanted to branch out. I was kind of ordering from the same sellers kind of over and over. And while I love uh, Atomic Avenue, the marketplace, there are some sellers that are better than others. And I wanted to kind of broaden my search a bit and start to take a look at some of the other sellers on the marketplace. And this is a seller that I've not ordered books before. Um, so I'm really looking forward to unpacking this order and seeing the condition of these books. And I'm really looking forward to unboxing this order and taking a look at the books inside. Now, in terms of kind of what I post on social media and value picks and so forth, I want to explain a little bit without it turning into a whole like presentation on the process. But essentially what I do is I look for books that have a really, really low or relatively low fair market value for a raw copy, for a raw book. And then what I do is I try to find places online. Uh, there's a lot of great Shopify sites. Uh, Golden Apple Comics is one that will have some back issues there uh, along with new releases. Uh, Gmart Comics, Things from Another World, um, although TFA doesn't have a lot of back issues, sometimes you can find recently released back issues there, certainly Mile High Comics and so forth. But what I try and do is I normalize all of these sellers under what they say uh, are near mint books. So I find what they classify as near mint, and then I run a comparison analysis of a particular book that is on sale at all of these different places. And then I compare that price, that the cost of the book in Near Mint, to the fair market value to see, you know, is it in line, is it overpriced, and so forth. But then also, is there an opportunity that if it is in Near Mint, could I press it and clean it up into a 9.8? Or could I blindly get a 9.8 from some of these sellers? And so what I do is, as I order them, I keep track. I keep track of the grades that I assign but I also keep track of what my chance is to receive a 9.8. So there might be a seller that you trust that's giving you high grade comics, but you're only really getting 9.4s and 9.6s. You never seem to get the 9.8 from that particular seller. You really can't judge it by one order. You have to do this over and over and then collect the data and really start to look at trends. So here's what I would like to do. Normally I save Kind of the spreadsheet views to the very end and i will show you what i paid for this order after i open it but i wanted to go back and look at kind of the current state of all of the different places that i've purchased comics from over the past three years online and do it now before i forget sometimes i talk about the ledger the the online store ledger that i keep so what i would like to do is show you this now before i forget now here is uh, this this master ledger that I've kept, uh, and so this what all, all this is is it's every book that I've ordered, and then if I've graded the book, then it affects sort of I guess the standings so to speak. Um, certainly, like a small sample size here, like the Ji Young Lee, I've ordered five books directly from JiYoungLee.com, and they've all been nine eights, right? So it's like wow, this is the best place to get books. Well you know, it's it's only five books. But if you start to look at a larger sample size, like Scout Comics, uh, I used to be a subscriber to the Scout Comics uh, monthly subscription. And one of the reasons I stayed with them for so long was because the books were coming in just so minty and crispy. Uh, and the, Column G is the one that I kind of want to talk about here, where 
it is your percentage chance to get a 9.8. So there are some sellers that will send books that are in high grade, you know, in the 8.5 to 9.4 range. But if you're never getting a 9.8 from them and that's what you want, then you can kind of make a decision or, you know, at least you have, you're more informed when you're buying from them. So how does this relate back to the value picks? What I try and do is figure out which books have a relatively low price uh, and I compare that price to fair market value because I try to stay at or under. In some cases, I'll pay over. And why do I pay over? Because there is a pretty decent percentage chance that I could get nine eights. So I sort of factor that in into my purchases. Uh, if we just flip up back up to the top and just look at that percentage alone, we can see like 616 Comics, uh, 54.55. Golden Apple, 54. Things from Another World, again, expensive, but high quality. I graded uh, 1,661 books from TFA, and there is a, a almost a 53% chance that the books that you order are a 9.8. Now, if books are damaged in transit, I grade the books as I receive them. So if I've graded, so if I've received a damaged order, these numbers reflect that. That's why Midtown down here ranked 18th overall. Uh, I've graded over 1,200 books from them. The average grade 9.4474, about 945, uh, with almost a 36% chance to get a 9.8. So even with damage order, this is why I took a break from Midtown and I went back because I was thinking, well, I've graded personally 443 books as a 9.8 from them. So it's a, it's a significant number. Now, for Atomic Avenue, and then I will get to the unboxing, uh, I have a lot of the sellers here listed. Uh, Parman is one of my favorite sellers uh, because um, it's little under a 10% chance to get a 9.8, but Atomic Avenue notoriously will not send you 9.8s on back issues. The sellers there, you know, I could probably go through, but you see even Parman, a seller that I really, really like, the average grade is only 9 uh, here's a seller, Donner 5. I got two books at a 9.8 uh, sitting at an average grade about a 9. So you can kind of see the, the trend here. Another 9 average, 8.7, 909, 8.65, uh, 907. So, and then it kind of goes down from there. What I try and do is I figure out, okay, let me start to have a little bit of variety in terms of if I'm buying from a marketplace or I'm buying from eBay. I used to kind of lump everything together like Atomic Avenue was was one source and I started to break it out. So even eBay is not one source for me anymore. It is, I do break it out uh, by the particular seller on eBay. And if over time I'm buying a lot of books from them, my theory is uh, if I'm getting nine eights and there's a good chance to get nine eights, I will get nine eights in the future. Um, it's just a very basic projection that I do but in order to get to the point where I trust the seller and I feel pretty confident that I could get a book in high grade uh, and hopefully get a 9.8, I have to order from them and I have to grade the books myself. I, don't, I do not trust the sellers to grade the books. So let me go ahead and unbox this finally, once and for all, show you the books that I got, and then I can get this order entered into my collection ledger, and then I can hopefully add his airness to a list of sellers that I trust and that I like buying from. So here we go. Okay, here is that order from Michael J23 uh, sent UPS second day air. And let's get this opened up. Okay, Tape Monster got me again. Uh, beautifully packaged uh, up until this point. Tons of bubble wrap, love it. Like the, everything looks solid, looks like nothing was damaged, but the seller <clears throat> um, put very, very thin with no, no tape pulls or anything, very, very thin packing tape on all four sides. So I can't slice this because I'll slice the books. So I'm trying to, and then also as I was trying to get the, uh, 
the bubble wrap off this very, very strong tape pulled the backing board off of this one, or pulled the, uh, the bag, I should say, off the, it just it ripped the bag. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and pick at this tape to get it off here. I'm not quite sure what to do at this point because I don't want to take a knife or some sort of tool to the tape because I know it's going to rip the comic. Uh, painter's tape, please. I, I beg everyone that ships books. This is like super, super tight and close to all of those delicate spines and edges of the comics. I cannot just slice through that and open it up. I have to pick at it and it is just the toughest tape I've ever seen. So I'm trying my best to get this open. Eventually, I know I will, even if I have to rip through each bag separately one at a time and almost open the comic. Maybe that's what I'll do. Yeah, hopefully I didn't damage it. Okay, I'm sort of in. <laughs> I'm gonna just start grabbing these books here. I think I can get through just peeling them off, take them out of the bag of board if need, need be, but let's get started. Oh, gosh, now it's all stuck. <sighs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. Okay, uh, let me try and get through this, and I may end up just taking them out of the no I'll leave them in all right here we go I finally got through it and the first book is Age of Ultron number 10 and this is quite a random book for me but I was looking up some information on the character of Angela who I thought at the time might make an appearance in Thor Love and Thunder or maybe have post credits or something or maybe she would just appear in the background and even that was speculation enough that she could be in the MCU. This is the first cameo appearance of Angela in the uh, in in Marvel Comics. So like in the Marvel universe. So I wanted to grab this one and uh it looks to be pretty good um from what I can tell here. I don't see a lot of spine ticks. Uh, I know it's in the bag still but um it looks to be in pretty good shape. So that was the first one. Something is Killing the Children, number one. I I think he sent me the wrong book. Uh, I don't believe this is a reprint. I think that the reprint, the later prints, are um, like the, it has the foil. Like the, there's some, I'm uh, I'm just pausing right here. I He sent me, okay, let me look at the invoice. Yeah, I ordered Something is Killing the Children, number nine and ten. Um, he sent me one and ten. Okay, uh, well, I'll have to contact him and see what he wants to do there. Uh, how about that? So, uh, a mistake in my favor? Uh, it's like the Monopoly card. There's a bank error in your favor. You're like, well, that never happens. Uh, huh. Well, there you go. Uh, something is killing the children number one. So I'll reach out to the seller and ask him what he wants to do here. Uh, I would imagine he wants the book back. So let me see... Okay, uh, yeah, uh, Something is Killing the Children, number 10. Um, I know this is not a single-digit issue, but I love this series, and this one does look to have a couple of spine issues, like two or three, actually. Sorry about the glare, but uh, one right there, and another one uh, oh, right above it right there. So very, very tiny, so probably a sort of a, a 9.4, maybe 9.6 on a good day type of book, but I wanted to pick this one up because... They're up to issue 25. This is issue 10. It's an early issue, um, and it's an all-black uh, background on the cover, so those are particularly tough to, to, to grade out. I'm looking at this one. I can't believe this. Uh, he sent me issue one. Star Wars Legacy 22. Just a random Star Wars Legacy book here. So nothing really significant here other than I'm a Dark Horse Comics Star Wars collector, and uh, I try and 
uh, get full runs of the Dark Horse series where I can. Um, and I just wanted to grab it at in near mint condition and roll the dice and see if I could get it at a good price. And Darth Crate, for the record, is not pleased. Still, still staring at that one. All right, I'm going to save this one for last. Uh, there's a few other goodies in here. Oh, let's open or show these in reverse order. This is Amazing Spider-Man 380. Uh, the Maximum Carnage storyline continues. And another just great, amazing Spider-Man. Get it at a relatively low cost. Venom, Carnage, Bagley. Uh, these books had sort of a resurgence around the Venom 2 movie, so to speak. And then just like everything else, though, has kind of fallen back down to earth. But always love to get uh, these books uh, with Venom and Carnage, and they're so they're so plentiful and easy to find. Uh, I don't believe this one's going to hit a nine eight. I do see a little bit of a, a little bit of right there under the. Oh, there's the light, but right there's a little bit of creasing, so it it certainly could be a press candidate and some whitening down there on the corner, unfortunately. But these are great books to get in a nine eight, uh, and you know they have nine eight value. We'll look at the actual values, but I want to guess somewhere between like the sixty and hundred dollar range. So always a, a pretty good uh, buy in there. Uh, here's another one uh, that had a little bit of spec value, Avengers number one, and this one heated up a little bit because there's a cameo of I think the next Avengers, and one of the members of the team is the child of T'Challa and Storm from an alternate reality. So there was like all of these kind of theories and everything as far as, you know, who is going to continue on as Black Panther in the MCU because of the untimely passing of Chadwick Boseman. And the thought was that they were going to rip another character out of the Marvel comics and insert them into the movie. Now, I've seen the Wakanda Forever trailer. I love it. I've lost track of how many times I've watched it, and I think that the Black Panther at the end is Shuri. I'm, I'm no pun intended, well, or I guess pun intended, I'm almost sure it's Shuri. Uh, but you never know, just as time passes and, and, you know, we could see multiple Black Panthers in a Black Panther 3 movie, I mean, way down the road, but there's Tosin, there's Azari, who that's the, the son of T'Challa and Storm in this in this book here, and it's a cameo, but it's a John Romita Jr. Uh, cover uh, written by Brian Michael Bendis, and this is my second copy of this book. Uh, it was around the time that and wanted to grab another one. This particular seller had it for sale. Um, looking at it through the bag, looks to be in pretty good shape. So like anything, maybe just some general average creasing, just some, some light wear. Uh, so it, it could you know, benefit from a press, uh, just a quick press, but looks to be in really good shape. So I'm happy with that. All right, a couple more books. Uh, this one, another speculation pick, but I can already tell um, has a little bit extra wear, more wear than I would like. And this is New Avengers number 40. And this is the first appearance of the scroll queen Varenki, who, and the rumor with this one is that Amelia Clark is going to play her uh, in some upcoming Marvel project, whether it's Secret Invasion, the actual show named after the event, we'll see, but uh, found it online at a good price. I had posted it as a value pick and started to look around to see uh, if it was available and wanted to grab a copy. This one, unfortunately, like I said, it does have a little extra wear. There is some spine stacking right in there, but also just some very, very... just. I would say maybe half a dozen hairline spine ticks. So probably nine in the nine two nine zero range. Of course, the more I look at it, the worse it gets. The uh, corner there is a little soft. There's probably a little color rub too. So maybe a nine 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 two on that one. Now, the last book was just a pure cover by. Um, this one I was uh, following uh, Ultra Maximus, and he talked about these sort of. Jim Lee variants that they did. And this is Uncanny Avengers number 25. But the point with this one was interesting because, again, Rogue, love Rogue. 
she has so many ties to different Marvel, not just Marvel characters, but Marvel properties now. Uh, Captain Marvel, X-Men, Avengers. And what was happening is these Jim Lee variants were just showing up all over the place on, on different titles. So the fact that it's a rogue cover on Uncanny Avengers, this was just gorgeous and found it essentially for, um, did I get it for cover price or a little bit less than cover price? So we're going to go through the details of what I paid for these books and compare, but uh, I wanted to kind of hunt down uh, a copy for myself. Uh, it's Again, there's no real uh, speculation here other than just a fantastic rogue cover, giving it a just a quick glance. Looks to be pretty good. Um, yeah, looks to be in pretty good shape. So I may have lucked out with that one. So those are the books. Um, I'm going to look. I'm going to blink twice. I'm going to stare at it one more time. I think, yeah, that's that's number one. So those are the books. Uh, let's see what I paid for these. I, I did not pay market price for something is killing the children, number one. But nevertheless, let's see what I, I paid for these. Compare it to fair market value and even play around with some of the grades to see what value they would have if they were graded by CGC. All right, so here is the order breakdown of the order from Micah J on uh, Micah J 23 on Atomic Avenue. Uh, it was placed uh, June 28th, 2022. Uh, it was a total cost of $63. Uh, there was no shipping and no tax. Uh, so I, I believe that the minimum order for free shipping was probably about 50 bucks. So I unlocked that. Uh, and so there's nothing really to distribute across the order, but just to make sure that all of my numbers line up correctly, the total cost in column Z, $63 does add up to the summary. Now the Cover price, fair market value, and column U, I compare that to column Z to determine the raw value, meaning did I add any value uh, to my collection by placing this order? I would say that hopefully for every dollar spent, I would get it back, but then did I uh, end up adding value or, or losing value depending on um, the cost versus the fair market value? So overall, almost a $33 value add. Uh, the one negative here is that Age of Ultron number 10. I paid $8 for that book and it has a fair market value of $4. It really was more of kind of a long shot sort of pick for me. I still like the character Angela. I like the backstory of how she first appeared in Spawn and that whole thing between Gaiman and McFarlane. So I think that Marvel's going to end up using her somewhere. So I still like having that book and some of her other books. As it stands right now, I paid twice as much for it. It's worth four bucks and I paid eight. Now the big winners here, uh, Something is Killing the Children number 10, I paid $5.50, has a fair market value of $22.86. Uh, so a $17.36 gain there. Number nine, I didn't actually get in my, possess my possession. I keep thinking about what just happened. Uh, I paid $9 for number nine. I didn't get number nine, but if I did, it would be worth $21.29 for a $12.29 gain. Uh, New Avengers 40 was break even, paid 20. It's a $20.10 book right now. Uh, we'll see as we get closer to Secret Invasion or any other news, uh, depending on whether Amelia Clark playing Varenke is confirmed or not. Uh, I think I still like New Avengers 40 as we move forward into, I believe, Secret Invasion's in Phase 5. But still, a great book to have. Avengers 4 was also kind of a break-even. Cost me $7.50, worth $7.59. Star Wars Legacy uh, got a little bit of a bump there. I only paid $1.75 for it. And it's always great to find uh, those Dark Horse Star Wars books in high grade. Uh, Uncanny Avengers, I paid $4.25 for that book. And it currently has a fair market value of $6.34. That was one of those books where I don't really care what the fair market value is, but I did check eBay, I think, at the time, and the prices on that were all over the place. It was like anywhere from five to 20 bucks. Uh, but so that, and again, you can find the book. I just happened to find it from this seller, kind of bundled all these books together and placed the order. So a nice $33 value add just for the raw books themselves. And again, my theory is if I buy them and I grade them and I just sell them raw as is, I should expect to have a positive return. So that's that's a good start to, to be able to do that. So I'm buying under FMV. Now, 
back to sort of the value picks, you know, one of the benefits of getting these books at a lower price point here is that these books uh, or some of these books have a very, very high ceiling if you get them graded. So again, that's the theory or my working theory is it's not a buy low, sell high. It's a buy relatively low to take a chance that a, that a high CGC grade is high, <laughs> high in value. So if I were to assign a 9.4 to all of these, because that's what near mint is, and just to kind of be fair to everybody involved, if I were to send in the books that had a value in 9.4, I'd, I'd break even. It's kind of just waste my time. Uh, it's a loss of $3.11. Uh, the New Avengers 40 in a 9.4 is worth 89. So even with the defects, if I look at it and assess that it is above 9.2, then it still would be worth uh, my while to send that in as an $89 9.4. So that's good news. And Age of Ultron 10, even be a, being a $4 raw book, it has it's a $58 value in a 9.4. Uh, again, so this is kind of the strategy. It's it's finding the gaps, finding those ranges between low fair market value for raw, high value for graded. Now, the fun part for me is flipping all of these to 9.8 so we can see what is the ultimate ceiling of potential. And if all of these books were 9.8, then this order has a total graded value add of $673.46. And that's after all of the fees and all of the costs to send everything to CGC. So it's your shipping fees, the shipping fee to send the books back, and then the grading fees at that, that entry level tier. Again, the big book here is that New Avengers 40, $294 currently in a 9.8. Uh, but several of these hitting that $100 price point. Uh, Something is Killing the Children, number nine, $102, and number 10 at $199. Again, I talk about this all the time. Like, you don't necessarily have to go back and get number one, although I'm still looking at it, that first issue that's in this order. You can go back and get the single digits at this point and, and focus on them. A lot of, like, the first four, five, six issues, seven is, is a tough one, but uh, eight, nine, and 10, uh, you know, and maybe even now 11 and 12, as we get further along, it still uh, is good value to grab these as well. Amazing Spider-Man 380, another great example. So has a fair market value of $8.22. Uh, in a 9.8, it has a, a greater value of $124. So you'd be gaining $84 if you bought that book raw, it graded out in a 9.8, or you were able to kind of buff it up and press it out into a 9.8, maybe it's a 9.6 raw with a little bit of a crease, huge value there. Uh, so I, I love finding those those sort of value books. Uncanny Avengers has no value in a 9.8 and that might be the first one I send in. So I feel an order like this does have a lot of value and that's what I talked about at the beginning. It's, it's a matter of using your skills as a collector, uh, but also keeping track of things, uh, using spreadsheets, uh, you can use notebooks, paper, it doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, if it's digitized, you can run formulas and things like I do. But keep track of your books, grade them, learn how to grade, figure out what defects are pressable and which ones aren't. And find these books that have this relative low value that I talk about because it's it's a lot of fun for me to press these books, to collect them, and look at the graded potential. And again, this is kind of an explanation of, of what the value pick is. It's not just a buy low, sell high strategy. It's really about uh, identifying books that are 9.8 candidates and taking advantage of that huge gap in the market between the book raw and graded as a 9.8. Thank you for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.